Um, so, hey guys, after listening to your interview with Alex Hormozzi, I became very interested in his success. I subscribed to his channel and watched every video he created for his for this year. It was only upon watching his video titled How I Made $35 million for My Companies Using One Sales Tactic that I became worried. In the video, he tells a story of running into an old college buddy that was earning 10 times more than Alex by selling supplements, which became the catalyst for Alex to begin selling supplements of his own. He struggled for a while with upselling new customers on his products until meeting a woman one day whom he described as having a nice ring and purse, aka money, and an upbeat, agreeable personality. He decided to use the assumed close tactic, or assumed close tactic, and asked her which protein flavors she'd like. The woman, being polite, asked for his recommendation, which he provided, before asking which flavor of pre-workout she'd like, adding his personal favorite being kiwi. She smiled and agreed. Fearing not to push his luck, he capped the interaction, asking if he could use the card on file, and she said yes, grabbed her products, and left. Where Alex saw a breakthrough business opportunity, I saw manipulation at its finest. He seemed to believe that he was such an avid salesman that he convinced her to buy, whereas I see it as someone not realizing they're making a separate purchase in the first place. Mm -hmm. Although I agree that simply changing the words you use to avoid proposing an either-or scenario to your prospects will dramatically increase your rate of success, I think in this situation the customer was more likely to believe the products were being given to her were um, included in her original purchase. Given your previous stance on the marketing strategies you're willing slash unwilling to use, I'm interested in your opinion. I value your guys' recommendations, which is what led me to dive deeper into Alex's business, but the deeper I go in, the more I find signs that this type of behavior seems to be a habit of his, and cognitive dis dissonance leads to him seeing misdirection and manipulation as cutting-edge business acumen. Mm. So, I, yeah, I don't know this particular example. I haven't listened to the story. I, without knowing the particular example, I would agree that if, because I've been in these scenarios where, and I've been on the other end, and I can sometimes lack the desire to do the conf the confronting where I assume somebody presents something as like, Oh, it, you know, it feels included. And then there's a bill later. And I, if it's a low enough dollar cost, I might just be like, yeah, fine, you know, do it. Uh, and I agree. That's not, you don't want to do that. So for that particular one, yeah, two, I, I think there's a better way to frame it. Um, that is still a two step close that you, know, you can talk about like, hey, we see the clients that do these sorts of things get a tremendous amount more benefit. But what if he said, so, because we, we weren't there. What if no, it's, I wasn't there. What if it's, you know, what's your kind of protein do you like, blah, blah, blah. What flavor pre-workout? I like kiwi. And he goes, okay, that'll be $90. Can I just build the, char the card on file? Mm -hmm. That seems fine. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think there, here's the big thing. That one is assuming the sale Making and the the other person understands this is an additional purchase. So that's what I'm saying. So you, that one so I'm fine take, with. You take that the protein totally off the shelf. With. You put it down. You take the protein off the shelf. You put it down, and then you say it's ninety dollars. And yes. right there, she can say, "Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was included. Can you put it back?" And it's, how you frame that, someone could be like, "Oh, well, you're putting pressure," but it's also like I just made it explicit mm -hmm. that this is a separate purchase before billing the card. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be totally fine. Well, I, I hear what you're saying. I think. <sighs> It's tough because let's let's imagine what's going on in the person's head that is actually making them more likely to buy. Uh, is it a fear of so? Here's here's where I go. Is it a fear of social confrontation that is making them go through with the purchase? If it is, then I think that you're that you're in uh, unethical territory at that point. Like if if someone is making a purchase because they feel ups that they'll disappoint you. Well, there also is a psychology. There's a psychological aspect of feeling ownership over something. Yes. Which is once you feel ownership over something, you're way more likely to want it, keep it, overvalue it. So once you put the protein and down, so that is it more fear of confrontation yeah, yeah. or is it the fact that she's like, oh, I'm going to make smoothies with this. Yeah. Okay, this is what I'm going to do every day. Oh, wait, it's $90. But I've already imagined my life with it and I want it. Yes. That seems fine. I'm cool with that one. So I'm yeah, cool I, I don't one. know that it's... I don't know. I guess I'm not there. I'm not there to read the micro expressions. Yeah. But you could imagine it's based on not wanting to confront him, but you could also imagine it's like the try the puppy method mm -hmm. of persuasion, which is just once someone has something, they like it. This is, uh, I'll do it real quick because who knows if it's true or not because psychological psychology studies are always tricksy to replicate. But mm -hmm. they did a test with Duke basketball tickets where everybody has to bid Dan Ariely, yeah. for uh, getting season tickets to Duke basketball. It's very high demand. Oh, it's a lottery. Yeah. It's not a bid. It's a lottery. No, so, so you have to, yeah, you have to wait outside if and for then, guaranteed tickets and then other people get them via lottery or something like that. But once people have the tickets, there's a ability to resell them. And they find there's a huge gap between what people who don't have the tickets are willing to pay for them 
and what people who already have the tickets value the tickets at. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the ticket, you picture yourself at the game or whatever and it is. And you've invested. I think that's another thing is that there's a lot of camping out that goes in, in for some of this stuff. So having put so much time in it. Right, I've but it's still the same. I mean, yeah, sunk cost, I guess, goes in there as well. But the the bid-ask spread on re these yeah, yeah. tickets is massive. And so there could be the same thing going on by someone just having mentally taken ownership of something mm -hmm. and then wanting it because they've yeah. already imagined their life with it. So if, to me, that's the ethical question is what is, and this is, this is going to depend on the very specifics of any interaction and how it's offered and in the context of what, and does this product usually get paired with this for free or doesn't it, you know, and so there's a lot of specifics that will determine my ruling on any particular interaction. But what I would say would be the principle is, are they going through the purchase based on the social pressure uh, to not look cheap. That to me is now like, this is unethical territory. Like, let, you know, let them get, ex but are they excited about the product and they thought about using it and they're excited about the results and you've got them to really imagine that? That's ethical in, in my perspective. So I don't know with the specific one, what was going on. Was there an additional question regarding Alex in particular? Uh, no, just more so the thoughts on the mm -hmm. ethics of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, one thing I actually will say, which, and I don't, I haven't watched Alex's stuff. Charlie is a huge fan. I've mm -hmm. watched two videos. Uh, his, he seems intelligent. I'm just focusing on videos, but, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a dangerous thing to do is to take someone on as a guru and then accept every single thing that they do as good and something you should do. So I think in general, what you're doing is intelligent and I respect it. And I would encourage you to continue it with everybody is take advice and assess whether you like the individual piece of advice. Don't take a guru on and accept everything they do, which is to say, if you find that you like 90% of Alex's advice and you don't like this piece of advice, throw it away. To be successful with the other advice, it does not require you to take on 100% of what they say. And I think it can be dangerous sometimes with anyone, with Tony Robbins, with Alex, with whoever, to be, accept them as gospel. Can I, can I add some color to that and see how you feel? I think that where you want to be skeptical and toss advice is from an ethical and moral mm -hmm. perspective. But I do think that if you're taking Tony's or Alex's or our advice about a domain of expertise and you're like, that would never work. No, try it. You should take the advice. <laughs> uh, try it is what I, I wouldn't say take the advice. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. To be fair, uh, we read a book called mm -hmm. The E-Myth, which is all about systematizing yeah, your business. Yeah, we took the advice. And then we took the advice and it didn't work. And then it turns out that he tried to systematize his business and it didn't work mm -hmm. for him, the author. So and once you've vetted someone, you don't take it yeah, as yeah. gospel, but you try it. Mm -hmm. You try it unless you think it's unethical. And in which case you don't even you have don't to try it. it. But yeah. if it just makes you uncomfortable, if, and this isn't you, but some people will get sales advice and they go, I just feel uncomfortable. Like, Hey, you should double your price for your coaching yeah. and, or you should double your price as a DM for D and D and people go, ah, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. It's like, would you like the money? If the other people were happy, would you be happy? okay, then you should try this <laughs> even if it makes you uncomfortable because it's not an ethics thing at that point. It's mm -hmm. just social courage. So yeah, I think there's a variety of reasons, I guess, to throw out advice. But yeah, if you think something's shady, just no pressure to do it. Yep. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.